So we're just outside Union Wharf in Market Harbour. We had a couple of days here. Well, we had two nights on the Port Air moorings just outside the basin, and then we moved down a little bit. I moved down a little bit. <laughs> I wasn't here. What do we think of Market Harbour? Oh, it's a nice sort of tony little town. Tony. I mean, you know, kind of high-end shops and stuff, and lots of little stores that are that are not chain brands, which is kind of nice. That's little stores, although there is also one little store. Yeah, there is a little. <laughs> the basin is nice-ish, but we weren't going to spend £12.50 a night to stay in the actual basin. For an electric hookup, basically. Yeah. And apparently warm showers. Yeah. The warm showers are accessible to anybody who's got a um, waterways key, but the electric hookup isn't. However, the electric hookup was of no value to us. 12.50. If you move along a little bit forward from the basin, uh, there are some bollards for mooring on a fairly curved section. It's a little bit hard to get your boat in, but there are also a lot of water points, like basically one per mooring. So, um, And then once you move up out of the harbor, you've got... Uh, Nice section of towpath and sort of quiet area. Today we're going all the way back down the Market Harbour that arm and hopefully up the Foxton flight if it's not too busy, which I don't think but it will least, be. But at least past the crazy um, swing bridge that will probably be open for another 11 boats <laughs> and to Foxton itself. Yeah, it's well, not at least, actually up. We'll at least get to the junction because it's only two and a half hours. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll pass the meat packing plant. Mm. Meat rendering plant. Mmm, good mm. smells. All right, I'm going to make some toast. Okay, toast it is. Joe's basically gone overland to try and um, cut some fairly large amount of distance off of walking along the towpath, which means I am doing the fairly long amount of distance on the boat. Um, basically, the way out of Market Harbor has two kind of meanders, where you do a big loop to the left and then a big loop to the right and then back again. Um, all of it to end up crossing the same road several times. So she's walking that road and I'm going this way. Just, just came around the corner and I'm like, I'm downwind of some sort of, well, I know what it is. It's a the, it's the meat rendering facility and I think they make pet food here. And uh, you just come around the corner and you realize you're downwind of it. Like there's this sour, meaty smell that's just kind of gross. Um, from this facility on the side right now. It's just kind of nasty. So we are at the, what's this pub even called? The Potsdam. Well, there's the old boathouse and the, it's too far to the side for me to read possibly. Um, and there's lots of boats chugging about. The Foxton walks in. <laughs> I oh. found it. <laughs> that sounds appropriate. Mm, yeah. So we've just moored up here. We've registered with the lock keepers to say that we're waiting to go up and we've ordered some food. So, um, we're hoping the food arrives before we're cool. actually on the way up because otherwise, otherwise Michael, Michael will be eating it on the back and we'll yeah. have to run the plate back. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking about driving through and it probably would be quite easy but there's just far too many people about. So it's just put too much pressure on me so I think you're going to do it. That's fine. I had to moor up over here with like 200 people watching me. So it was <laughs> good fun. Um, I just keep looking to see if our food's coming. Yeah, George is sitting over there beside somebody else's table trying to eat their food. He's adopted a family. Yeah, <laughs> but we did find a recycling point, so that's a big, big bonus. We finally got rid of all of our recycling. So, next stop, Foxton Locks, and then at the end of the top, we'll get off more. And come and have a bit of explore.
been more than a little stubborn today. He's always like that at locks, but the thing is usually it's just one lock. Yeah, he's like that at locks, and then there's a staircase of... Yeah. So it's like we're ramping up the locks, and we're ramping up his, his stubborn indignity. And, but yeah, usually when there's one lock, he'll just plant, and then we'll do it. And then he's like, okay, yeah. I can walk now. And then the volunteer, who was so helpful, he was just like, you have to keep him on a lead. Like, you can't you can't yeah. let him sit here, because apparently they had an, an incident a couple of years ago with a, a dog that was mauled and killed. You, can't, you have to have him on the lead. Like, he could go somewhere, and I'm like, that dog's not going anywhere. <laughs> Over here, just around the corner, there's a brass horse like a towing horse, and I'm like, no, see my dog? My dog's basically a brass sculpture right now. Like, just just consider him to be a lump of metal that isn't gonna go anywhere, cause he is unhappy. So we're gonna spend like at least a day here. Sorry uh, about the noise, the boat next to us has just turned their engine on and we're too hot and lazy to move. So basically, we went up the locks. Yeah, yeah, the, the Market Harbor arm coming back was a little dullish because basically we'd gone down it just a couple days ago, so it's it's basically just reversing along the same. Road. And the scenery is pretty much the same. There's nothing to see. Yeah. And there was a boat following us the whole way. <clears throat> and then I made Michael pull over so that I could change the battery on the camera. So that boat overtook us, and then they had to stop at the swing bridge. And so they dropped two people off to do the swing bridge, and they didn't realise that I was like literally there as well to do the spring swing bridge because I was walking. And she went, "Oh, that's why he over he let us overtake so that we had to do this for him." And I was like, "No, actually, I'm here too." Yeah. <laughs> so, but that was quite funny. Once we got there to the restaurant, uh, sat outside the Fox and Lock Inn, and had um, a, a, a wait for a bit of uh, food, which was delivered at the very last second as we were waved over to come into the locks. So like, we just swiped it onto our own plates and gave the plates back and you ate it going up. Yeah, and um, as you were going in the first lock, woman's like, look, he's got a plate of nachos down there. Yeah, I'm <laughs> eating a plate of nachos on the way up first to the staircase locks. So the staircase locks themselves were, were really great. They were, they were yeah. quite interesting. I'm glad I got to do half of them outside but, yeah, and half inside. I'm glad we swapped. Yeah, got to see a little Did bit of Did he explain about the water? Yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of obvious, but... It wasn't obvious to me. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. But it's, uh, I mean, basically, like, if you don't have the pond, then it has to do the same job as the pond. So one thing has to empty out into the thing that's being used to fill the other thing. So these these biflow ponds are kind of what's being used. And, and they, yeah. And they've color coordinated the locks uh, um, paddles. So you, you always open the same, the red paddle first. Did he tell you red before white and you'll be all right? No, didn't know that one. Yeah, it's an, it's an and, interesting... Oh mechanism. my goodness, how many people were watching. Yeah, there was like, a lot of people watching. You couldn't get to the paddles, and like, I don't think either of us... I think I opened two gates. I didn't open a single gate. I closed one. <laughs> and, and it was basically just because there was large amounts of children and adults who were pulling them open for Especially us. Actually, oh, some of the children were so cute. Ah, they were so cute. There's an inclined plane just beside it, which we're going to go take a look Did at. You, and then just as we're mooring up, just as I was about to do a brilliant moor up, Michael said, give me the rope, and he pulled me in. But I'm, I'm confident I could have got into this space. Anyway, this little boy said, that is... trying to help. That isn't a real boat, so apparently we're not living on a real boat. Oh yeah, that was cute. He was, he was walking along and he's pointing at our boat and he's like, it's a boat, but it's not a real boat. <laughs> so, who knew we were not living on a real boat? Yeah. Anyway. That's a toy. Should we go and be some, be some gong, be, <laughs> Do some gong -goozling? Yeah. Sure. Let's just make a bunch of other boaters uncomfortable. While Joe was editing this video, she sort of realized that we hadn't really talked about the inclined plane and um, and that we just sort of did some photography. So what's the inclined plane? The Foxton inclined plane was built in 1900. Its purpose was to um, get around the bottleneck that the Foxton locks had become. It ran for about 10 years full time. Uh, it continued in operation um, for a little while after that and was ultimately destroyed and dismantled in 1926. Contrary to some popular belief, it never really broke down a whole bunch, um, and the main reason that it failed was really just the lack of traffic that happened once the canals as a whole started becoming less and less useful. So, what was the Foxton Incline Plain? Um, basically, it's a plain, like in the mathematical sense, it's a, it's a hill, 
and um, effectively they wanted to get people up that hill and the way they did that was they made these two large steel boxes called caissons and they were connected by a series of um, cables and pulleys and a steam driven engine not horses which I thought it might have been but I didn't know how old this thing was the steam driven engine would effectively move the two up and down in opposition to each other um, similarly to what is called a funicular which is a railroad that moves where the two things are in opposition and held by gravity. You would go to the top, you'd come along the canal, get to the very two edges, one caisson would come up, you'd go in, they'd close the door, that would produce a watertight box. Someone down below would come in at the other side, or there'd just be some water, but normally there'd be another boat. They'd close the box, and the two would move in opposition to each other. Then the two boxes would open, and each of you would come out the opposite direction. So it was a pretty in impressive idea and a very efficient one. Uh, essentially they ran on sort of concrete and steel rails, so they, they were basically like a little railroad type thing with um, little uh, bogies, had little bogey wheels, and that allowed them to, to move up and down the rails. It ultimately ended up kind of not being something that could last for very long, which is too bad because it would be a beautiful thing to have around today. There is actually a trust that's trying to bring it back, that's trying to raise money to uh, restore it, however it does not seem to be the most likely thing to happen anytime soon. Um, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Is that good? Right. Can't say the word little without you saying little. You can say little, you just can't say little. I said little. <laughs> oh, diesel going up. Right. Oh, that's where we got that thing. Yeah, there's, there's like no variation except for the place where there's... What the hell is that? The hatch. Ooh, stinky. Yeah. Oh, really annoying now. Oh well. <laughs> Should we go and record at the back? No, it's just, I mean, the audio will, will be fine. I know, but uh, we're like in a f cloud of fog and... Well, we weren't going to be very long. I've right? got my heckles up. Yes, well, I can see your heckles are up. Alright, so do you want to transit to the back? No. What with the... It was nothing personal. We are just off. Okay. No worries. Um, whenever anybody says it's nothing personal, I'm like, yeah, it, is. it was personal, wasn't it? Was personal. Especially if he moves like 10 feet and more than that. stops again. <laughs> we're just moving on. 15 feet, you lousy, loud mouthed American schmuck. Um, right? Damn it. Tree. Hold on. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Damn it. Okay. So, what was the inclined plane? Yeah, yeah. Right, that was that. How do you it? An inclined plane can also be described quite accurately as a declined plane. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, wait, what? I always get this one wrong. I'm done being a trained monkey for the moment. Trained monkey!